Good morning. I'm Alan Robinson. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and Reverend Brad Hurst, our pastor, welcome to Second Christian Congregational United Church of Christ here in Kittery and all over the world via our Facebook stream. Welcome to the happy band of online worshipers sitting in their air-conditioned comfort, watching us up here sweating. We know that you have lots of options on how to spend a warm and sunny summer Sunday morning, and we are honored that you have chosen to spend it with us. Pastor Brad is doing well and continuing to recuperate at home, and we are really very happy to be able to offer you a special treat this morning as we celebrate the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Today we have that truly terrific twosome of Nadine and Charlie Donnell helping lead this worship service along with our multi-talented minister of music, Mike Effenberger on the piano. Thank you, Mike. Yes. We thank Sharon and Ernie and Kathy and Elaine for their service as deacons and greeters this morning. And of course, our bell ringer, Orville. Thank you, Orville. I think it was 11 rings of the bell this morning. Good work. As always, we thank Paulette and Melissa and Sandy and the other ladies down in the uh, in the kitchen preparing for our collation following uh, today's worship service. And we invite you, of course, to join us downstairs in the vestry for some treats. After worship service today, we will be hosting a church council meeting. It's our monthly business meeting. We moved it to today for some convenience. And anyone, as always, anyone interested in joining us for the council meeting, you're always welcome to, to join us. We'll be meeting upstairs out back, uh, following the worship service and following eating some pastries downstairs. The meeting won't be particularly long today. We don't have too much business, so it'll go quick. Uh, other announcements next week. We are really excited and honored to be hosting a baptism for little Gianna, who's back there in the kids area. And we're gonna be having a baptism luncheon following the service. And if you'd like to sign up to participate in that, uh, we'd like you to. There's a sign up downstairs. Also downstairs during the collation, there are several greeting cards out ready for you to sign and send greetings to several of, of the members of, and friends of this church. Are there any other announcements? Ernie. Thank you, Ernie. Just to repeat for the folks online, we are conducting a CPR training course next Saturday from 9 to 11 downstairs in the vestry. And we encourage you to come and participate in that training. And if you are interested, we ask that you sign up so that we know how many people are coming. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? 
Okay, once again, thank you for being here. And as Mike centers us with his gift of music, let us prepare to worship God. Our call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsively. Our God knows us intimately. Our God is holy. Holy God, you consecrate us. Our God will reassure us. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, number 70, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale. Let us join together in our gathering prayer. Mothering God, we rejoice that you placed us in the womb and called us forth. Give us the blueprint as we build and bless our hands as we plant. We rejoice in knowing that our steps are guided by you and you are reliable. 
we delight ourselves in your presence and give thanks as you deliver us from fear and let your love have its way in us embolden us to speak your truth to power and let the power of your truth always be evident in us amen Let us pray together as we prepare to hear God's word for us today. Make ancient words new and lost hopes rise again as you speak the promise to us this day of spirit of truth, O life-giving breath. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Let us listen for the word of God. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. 
But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This morning, Charlie read our first scripture lesson from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Now it's my job to read our second scripture lesson, which as you know, usually is taken from the New Testament. I started to think about it and consider my options. I could make it easy on myself and go with the recommended scripture reading from the lectionary or maybe I could do something a little different. You know, while Brad's away, Alan will play. <laughs> I know you're watching, Brad. What I'd like to do is share with you my favorite scripture reading from the Bible. Or better yet, like David Letterman, share, you, share with you my top 10 list. The problem is that while I know a favorite verse when I hear it. I've never listed my favorites in order. And in fact, I've never even listed any of them. And as I thought about it, I wondered, do I even know 10 scripture verses? Well, what about you? Do you think you can list your top 10 favorite verses of the Bible? I bet you can. Like a good engineer should, I started my little project with a review of the data. Here we have the Holy Bible, which of course is a collection of religious texts and scriptures sacred to Christianity and Judaism, as well as many other religions. It was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek and we consider it to be a product of divine inspiration. The Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, the Old Testament. It has 39 books, ranging from Genesis to the book of the prophet Malachi, 39 of them. And the New Testament has 27 books, from the gospel according to Matthew to the revelation of the prophet named John that details such things as the second coming of Christ. Okay, so there are 66 books in this Bible. How many chapters are there? I counted them. There are 929 chapters in the Old Testament, and there are 260 chapters in the New Testament. That gives us a total of 1,189 chapters, or an average of 18 chapters per book. That's a lot. Wow. I hesitate to ask the next question, but the answer is, there are 23,145 verses in the Old Testament and 7,957 verses in the New Testament for a total of 31,102. This little thing that I'm doing just got pretty big. I need to sift through all of those 31,000 verses and identify the top 10. Holy cow. So I did it, and I wonder if the top 
10 that I selected may be on your list as well. Let me clarify a couple of things as we get going here. The verses that I selected actually may be more than one verse. I'm sure you'll get the gist of it as I get going. And while I love the variety of translation that, translations that Brad presents to us every week, for simplicity, I'm going to stick with the King James Version, which, as you know, is an English trans translation of the Bible commissioned by King James I of England in 1604 and published in 1611. Okay, let's start with number 10. How could I not do this one? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a pretty good one. It was written by the Apostle John and is the core of Christianity. That God loved the world enough to come as Jesus and die for us so that anyone who trusts in him will be saved from sin. It is certainly the most well-known of the Bible verses and is probably the best known and most memorized part of any holy text in human history. Why, we even have posters displaying John 3.16 at sporting events and golf tournaments. John 3.16. These words are very much like the verse in John 11, verse 25, in which he says to a lady named Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Martha was a lucky lady to hear these comforting words directly from Jesus together with her siblings, Lazarus and Mary. Martha lived in the village of Bethany near Jerusalem and was witness to Jesus resurrecting her brother, Lazarus. Okay, that's number 10. Number nine, Ephesians 4, 29. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is good for building up, so, so there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. This is a good reminder that if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Especially today, I thought that should make my top 10 list. Number eight, 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and not have charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity, charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Oftentimes we hear this verse and substitute the word love for charity. These were written in a letter to the church, to the church at Corinth by the Apostle Paul. These words are practically an anthem for Christian weddings. When all is truly well and fellowship is working its greatest work, 
two lives, two families uniting. It is printed in the program and even on the napkins. It's funny because when Paul wrote these words for the people of the church in Corinth, they were very much lacking love and charity for each other. The Corinthian church was a mess and Paul was trying to straighten them out. He intended to introduce into the community an ethic that is necessary if they were to survive the muddy waters of difference and disagreement. Let's just remember, number eight, the greatest of these is love. Number seven, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all of the daughters will, of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear shall be in the way and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home and the mourners go about the streets or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That is just incredible. King Solomon wrote these, wor these words when he was an old man. He was probably contemplating his own mortality as it is a poetic description of advancing age. He wasn't afraid of death at all and was working his greatest uh, efforts in helping to inspire and motivate others. He wrote that we go no place by accident and that our efforts are never made in vain, that we can walk confident, confidently by the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that the time we invest for the sake of God will return to us tenfold. And lastly, that eternity and our eternal God make everything matter. King Solomon, amazing. Number six, Matthew six. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Two versions of this prayer are recorded in the Gospels. This longer form within the Sermon on the Mount is from the Gospel according to Matthew. And there's a shorter form in the Gospel of Luke when one of the disciples asks Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. The Matthew version was spoken by Jesus early in his ministry in Galilee. And the version in the Gospel according to Luke was one year later when Jesus was preaching in Judea. That was number six. Number five, how could we not have one from the Psalms? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know who wrote that? David, a shepherd boy. He was the author of this psalm. He was later known as the great shepherd king of Israel and the father of King Solomon. He writes this psalm as a sheep would think and feel about his or her shepherd. It is probably the most often recited and most beautifully written of the psalms. Number five. Here we are at number four already. Luke 2. This could have been my number one. The next several of them could be all number one. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. One reason a Charlie Brown Christmas remains the most popular Christmas show ever made may be because Linus Van Pelt reminds us and his friend Charlie Brown of the true meaning of Christmas by reciting the King James version of Luke's Christmas story that describes the birth of Jesus. It's pretty special. Admittedly, though, the other reason that it's that popular is because the music score by the great American jazz pianist Vince Guaraldi was so incredibly great. The producer of the cartoon, Lee Mendelssohn, contacted Vince and asked if he would be interested in writing the score. Vince enthusiastically agreed and a short time later, like very short time later, called Lee and said, you gotta hear this. Lee said, I don't want to be the first time hearing this song on a poor telephone connection, and suggested that he come right over to Vince's studio. Vince enthusiastically replied, no. If I don't play this for someone to hear right now, I'm going to blow up. <laughs> I, can just, I can just hear it. He composed the music for the cartoon and its special song, Christmas Time is Here, my favorite. When Mendelssohn heard Christmas Time is Here, he wrote the words, the lyrics to that song in 15 minutes on the back of an envelope. That was number four. Number three, this could be number one. Number three, in the beginning, Genesis. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. It continues on and ends with, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Tradition credits Moses as the author of Genesis. This beautiful account of God's creation is so amazingly perfect and wonderful. Every time I consider the incredible beauty of the earth, our solar system and beyond, the utter vastness and absolute perfection and precision of the cosmos, I think back to in the beginning, God created all of this grandeur as only God could do. Number two, this comes from John, the Apostle John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For me, this simple verse connects God and Jesus and boils everything down to this one simple truth. Later on in John's account, we hear that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Apostle John admits in this chapter that he was sent by God to be a witness of Jesus so that all men through him might believe. That's pretty good. And the number one scripture that made my top 10 list, Matthew 22. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The top 10 list. I challenge you and hope that you will come up with your own top 10 list. There's a fun project to do. Amen. I will be sharing a pastoral prayer posted on life in liturgy from the Christian Church. But I invite you to lift up those names in need of prayer today. I'll start with Pastor Brad. Samira? Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you in prayer, lifting to you the joys and concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we also be open to your voice in our lives, that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears the direction you will have us to go. Bless, we pray, this gathering of your people, that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose to which you have called us. Hear our prayers for those whose lives have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, 
those who grieve, and especially for Pastor Brad and Samira. May we touch their lives, not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. Guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children called to our purpose in your world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We come now to offer what we have and who we are to God. As Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8 says, not my favorite, but it's a good one. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. We will not be passing the offering plates again this morning, but thank you for your gifts using the link on the church website or the offering plates in the back of our sanctuary. Let us prayerfully consider our gifts as Mike shares his. Let us give thanks. Giver, steward, and guide, may this give, these gifts we present multiply beyond the boundaries of our community to create new possibilities in a new world. Bless our offerings of presence, ability, and resources as we participate as your co-creators in a new age. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 452, Here I Am, Lord.
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.